So, you want to do a dollless hardware jam and you don't know where to start. Well, the first thing you're going to need to be able to do is capture your audio. You're probably going to want to videotape the whole thing as well, so you're going to need a camera. I guess your first option is to just use the audio in on your camera. You could actually take uh, your audio out and bring it right into the camera and try that if you want to. I don't really recommend this method. It definitely works. I've done it in the past. It works great if you're remote out there somewhere in the field, not in front of your computer. Another option is to use something like this handy zoom recorder. It takes stereo or mono in. Again, this is a very, very useful option. But if you think about it, it's kind of silly because you're going to be recording your audio onto a micro SD card and you're probably just going to take that file and move it to your computer. To wit, I say, why not just record it to the computer and be done with it? One option is a DAC like this, a digital, excuse me, an ADC, an analog to digital converter like this. This has worked very well for, for me in the past, but it's a little on the cheap side and it kind of shows you don't get quite the oomph that you might want. Another option is to beef it up to something like the Scarlet 4i4. This is really more than I need. I only need the stereo in. This has four in. I really just need the stereo in. That's fine though, but let's go with this. Great, so now we have this option. We're going to hook this into our computer, uh, but here's the thing. Where are we going to put our stuff? Here's where we're going to put our stuff. We're going to need a big table. The bigger, the better. You think you're not going to need a big table? Trust me, you're probably going to need two of these things by the time we're done, but that's okay. We came here for space. We came here for ambience. We came here for dog. The audio to digital converter is hooked up to the computer. If you notice, I am using two TRS plugs. If you use a really nice analog to digital converter like this, I highly recommend that you use TRS for both the left and the right, even though one of these will care, carry a stereo signal all on its own, you still want to use this for the left and the right, and the reason why is something we call common mode rejection. This will help prevent noise from entering your jams while you're recording it. Next, we're going to need power. I'm using this power strip. This has 12 AC plugs into it. Wonderful stuff. All I need to do is activate the power thusly. One thing to note is that this is going into a protected power surged power strip. So now we have our table, our power supply. We have our audio to digital converter. We just need some sound sources. We need some things that make noise. We have sound sources now. We've got a couple bass spots and we've got a drum machine. The problem now, how do we get the sound over to here? Well, we can hook one of these into another of the output. If this takes an audio input, external audio input, we could merge those together and maybe, no, 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 no. I think this is where a lot of people miss the big picture here because what you see when you see a Dallas Hardware Jam is you just usually see the devices that are making the music. What we're missing is a mixer. We could use a simple mixer like this. This is like a $40 mixer that provides eight mono in or four stereo in. This would totally do the trick for us. It converts mono to stereo for you. But why not use a real mixer? This gives me 16 mono tracks in, about four stereo tracks in. I've got several outs. I've got built-in digital effects, a built-in nine band equalizer, this is much better in my opinion. This will cover just about everything that you need to do. And on top of that, this mixer doesn't really cost too much more than this drum machine. So now that we have our sound sources, we have our mixer, and we have our analog to digital converter, we need to start hooking some stuff up. And before we do that, I want you to notice that I have the stereo out going into the focus right. And again, I'm using two TRS to provide common mode rejection to prevent noise from getting into our jams. In order to hear these instruments, I will need to get a TS cable to hear each one. I will need three. I'm going to hook up one cable for each of these devices into the mixer over here, and I will probably just pick tracks one through three, because why not? Everything is plugged in, and we should be able to hear sound now. When I hit play, I can definitely see that we're getting signal on both the focus right and don't see much of an input into my mixer right now because I don't have it boosted very much, but that's okay. We'll try the next one. More output and the drum machine. 
And of course, you can hear everything through my headphones right now. If we wanted to, we could have an external monitor. We could hear things in the room, no problem. Let's check out what's going on over here with the com computer, however. I have Audacity loaded up, and you can't really see very well, but I'm going to switch the input device to the Scarlett USB. Hit record. And now I'm going to start playing various stuff. We get some kind of a signal. Get some serious clipping, of course, but, you know, we'll work out all the details later. This basically is the hardest part. Once you get everything, you hear the sound that you want. The next thing we want to do is we want to synchronize everything. So how I'm going to synchronize things is with MIDI. We'll do that next. Just like the mixer, the MIDI hub is another missing ingredient that is often not seen in Dallas Jams. This is essential to keep everything synchronized together. And not only that, but send note data from one instrument to another. Quite essential, especially if you use something like a master sequencer. You can control several different synthesizers and drum machines, all from one sequencer using a MIDI hub. This is one of my favorite MIDI hubs. This is a RetroKit RK004, and this has seven ports. They can be configured to be inputs or outputs just based upon what is read by this thing. This thing automatically detects if the, if the port is input or output, and it also has a tempo sync. I can send out a clock if I want to. And I can also do a tap tempo with this and change it accordingly. It's a really, really handy, useful tool. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hook up MIDI. I'm going to select something as the master. We'll say that the drum machine will be the master. So I'm going to have MIDI out of the drum machine into uh, the, the hub. And then MIDI in coming from the hub to each of these two devices. The instruments are now plugged into the MIDI hub. And this now acts as the master clock for each of these devices as well as starting and stopping them. Additionally, they are all now synchronized. So when I slow the tempo down, everybody slows down to the same beat. And everybody stops. So what's left to do? Well, everything. This is where the creative process kicks in. What kind of jam do you want to make? What kind of sequences? What kind of drum pattern? Now we can actually start creating something. But before we do that, we should talk about effects. There are basically two ways we can handle effects, in series or in parallel. One thing I love about this mixer is that it provides effects for you already in parallel. That is, they mix along with the original signal. So I'm going to press play on the bass bot. You can kind of hear a little bit. Sorry, not too much. I'm going to apply some reverb now. Now I'm going to apply some delay. And I did that by these knobs over here. They send the signal to the effects internally. Uh, I had this one dialed up to a delay and had this one dialed up to reverb. And that's how we can get parallel effects. I can also add my own effects in parallel to this mixer via some of these output switches and input, excuse me, output jacks and input jacks. Let's talk about effects in series now. One of my favorite in series effects to use is an overall effect on the overall mix. Here I'm using a stereo compressor for the final mix going into the audio to digital converter. I will play around with this for probably up to an hour trying to find different settings just to get the right setting. It really is an art form. But once you get it just right, I find that the drums can just cut through the mix like nothing else. It's really, really awesome. That's just me, though. So now I have some effects added in series. All I am doing is I am routing the output of this device. Instead of going directly to the mixer, now it's routed through this effect pedal. Likewise, this device is now going through this effect pedal, and this is now going into a track on the mixer. So if I play some things... We can hear this device over here. I can activate it, its effect. And for this one, same thing. And this gives me just more options for coloration of tone. What I want to work on next, however, is I want to start rearranging things. Things are fine now, but I want to add some more devices and effects. And I'm already running out of room, as you can see. I haven't even added this, the spot where I'm going to be adding the camera to record all of this, but 
we'll get ahead of that. I'm jumping ahead of myself. What I want to do next is I want to start rising things up off the table. As you can see, these cables, they're bumping into the back of this device and it's going to start causing problems. Things are going to start getting into a mess. It would be so much nicer if these cables could go like straight underneath. Likewise, look at all of this space that I'm wasting over here by the mixer. If I could raise the mixer up off this table, I can have some pedals here and the cables will go underneath and back to the other side. So that's what I'm going to work on next. I'm just going to go ahead and rearrange everything. I like to use these little tables to rise everything up off the off of the main table. The main reason so that I can get the cables underneath other devices. But it also serves as a secondary function just to get things closer to me, which is pretty awesome. But now I have more room here. also have more room here with the mixer. And also have all this space underneath where I can add more effects and have the cables go under and behind. And now that I have more room, I can add more synthesizers. I have added the MS-1. I've added a TD3, an RD6, and the 2600. So from here, everything that you're looking at now is connected via MIDI with the exception of the 2600. I plan to use CV gate for the 2600, but that's, I'm getting ahead of myself. Right now, if I hit play on the RD9, we'll see that this, this one starts, this one starts, these two have started and this one has started. So all of the sequences on all of these devices are now starting thanks to MIDI. But here's the thing, all that's happening is that this device is sending out MIDI clock and the rest of these are all responding to it and their tempos are going accordingly and they play their sequences. Right now I'm setting, I have all blank sequences, that's why we don't hear anything coming out of the headphones. So what I would like to do is I would like to have a main sequencer instead control everything. So let's back up a little bit. The RD9, it plays, it sends out MIDI clock, it also sends out a MIDI start event, but it's also sending out MIDI note events for its um, uh, drum instrument parts. And they're set to a very, very, very low value on the uh, keyboard scale. So it's not really registering and sending and causing these instruments to fire off is what I'm saying. Uh, that's actually kind of handy, but at the same time, it would be nice to have some sort of a master controller, which is what I want to do next. So instead of having, uh, instead of using these sequences on each of these individual devices and tediously having to go through and program them and line them up accordingly and remember which one is which on a bunch of different devices, I'm instead going to have one master device that controls everything. Before we go on to that, however, let's also talk about now. Because I've lifted the mixer up, I can get these two devices in here very easily. I've added two more effects units. Uh, these are digital effects units. I'm not so worried about interrupting my pure analog synthesizer chain here now. But what these are going to offer are more digital effects just like these two offer. And the way that this works is back here, these two jacks are output jacks and they send the signal of whatever track, whenever I turn up either one of these red knobs, one or two, it will send that output signal out here to the, these two cables. And we've got one going to this device and one going to this device, mono in, stereo out to these two tracks. So now I can also control the EQ if I want to. And what this provides for me, now I have four different groups of effects that I can use for these, these tracks, whatever I want to use. Also, I have most of these tracks are all dedicated to drums. I'm using the individual outs of the RD9 and the RD6, mainly just the bass drum, the RD6. But this will allow me to better shape and control the sound of the drums. So let's go ahead and move on next to getting a master sequencer. It's going to go right here. And this is my tool of choice, the Scorp Pyramid. However, I tried to hook this in just now and nothing worked. So I have unplugged all of the MIDI. I'm going to start all over. Everything's over here now. I'm just going to start one thing at a time. Uh, the first thing I did to make sure everything was working correctly is just directly out of this box. Into this box is a test. Hopefully you can hear that. So I see that MIDI is responding and if I hit play, well if I go to an actual track and hit play, it will respond to that as well. So what I need to do next is just hook this into the MIDI router and then back into this thing and see if it still works and then just start adding one thing at a time. Just sometimes you gotta take it all back and start over again. Okay, making some progress. This one is now hooked up. 
This one is now hooked up and I've got the RD9 hooked up as well. I think what happened is something bit me from previous that I had configured. It's like an advanced MIDI thing. I would love to talk about it. It's just going to confuse the heck out of you and it has nothing to do with what you're trying to do. Suffice to say, the lesson to learn here is to go slow. I think the mistake that I made was I had all the MIDI already hooked up and I tried to just change a few things around. And yeah, you can get away with that sometimes, but if it just doesn't work, don't be afraid to pull everything and start over. So now that all the instruments are hooked up and ready to go, everything is going through the mixer, they're all being controlled by the sequencer, what is left is to just record the jam. I recently streamed a performance of this, a test run, and all that I used was my webcam as you can see here. And this worked out very well for me. <laughs> But for this performance, I want to actually just capture it onto an SD card using my tripod stand and this trusty little zoom camera. And I'll try to aim for about a 10 minute performance and then I'll multiplex the audio and the video together and then I'll upload that to YouTube this March 3rd. I really appreciate y'all hanging out with me and watching. I hope this made a lot of sense. Any questions, feel free to ask and we'll see y'all next time. Happy 303 day, y'all. Bye-bye. Uh, 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 uh.